and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Reading from the Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven, nor the sun, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each which, with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Here ends the reading. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Please pray with me. Gracious God, open our hearts to the power of your loving word. Amen. Normally, Advent is, for me, a time where I feel compelled to remind myself and everyone else that it's time to slow down, to shift our focus away from the busyness, from all the distractions that draw our attentions, so that we may stay awake, as Mark encourages us to do. But this year, 2020, has been so full of waiting, I'm not sure I want it anymore. I'm ready to get on with it. And while much of the last eight months has put me in the mind of Advent, our sacred stories and our church's tradition invite us into waiting with expectation, not worrying with anxiety, which is the sort of waiting I find myself in more often than not these past months. We live in a mystery. Advent is a season of getting ready to receive Christmas. The birth of Jesus, God's son, God with us, the Christ, the one who has come, the one who is here always, eternally, and the one who is coming in majesty when everything will be revealed. 
I could use some majesty right now. I don't know about you, but I find myself, especially lately, experiencing a disconnection. I'm awed at our ability to adapt and change and evolve. Wearing a mask feels much more normal to me now than it did several months ago. And I am grateful to see the ways we are leaning in to take care of each other. I'm also frustrated by our ability to ignore danger, to ignore risk, to think of ourselves as invincible, to not remember that what we choose to do or not do affects each other. So I think that's all part of why this year more than most, I am hungry, spiritually hungry for Advent. Advent is about making space for something new, for someone new for the Holy One incarnate, beautifully vulnerable, for a baby. With the ability to crack the hardest of shells we wrap ourselves in for protection. With the invitation to see things differently. With the earnest desire for relationship with us and through us with each other. Isaiah's words, that first sacred story we heard, oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. Find my heart resonates with those words that the prophet wrote so long ago. I would love some bold, majestic display of glory, God coming down to set things right. And yet in this space of waiting, with hope, with expectation, we've been gifted the opportunity to be about God's work while we wait God's coming. This section of Isaiah, later in Isaiah, was probably um, written and dealt with some of the challenges that the people were experiencing during the Persian period. This was a time when Some of the Israelites who'd been kicked out under the Babylonian rule were returning under Persian rule. And the Israelites, as they returned back to Jerusalem, were engaging or clashing with the Israelites who had been left behind, who had been in Jerusalem the whole time. Along with feeling like the last eight months have been the longest advent ever, I have thought again and again about, it reminds me of the, when the Israelites were kicked out of Jerusalem and they had to leave their temple, the holy space, the building, and go figure out how to be about their faith, how to remain connected to each other and to God out and about in the world on their own, though never alone. Anyway, this period, this season, we have these two different groups probably more than two, trying to figure out how to work out who had political authority, who had religious authority, who was doing things the right way. And they were all living under the the weight of domination, really, from the Persians. So you've got this mix of power weighing down on each other, cycle of oppression, dealing with colonization and all that. And the story also puts me in mind for the various things we still experience today. And in the midst of this, Isaiah, the prophet, the writer reminds us that we are clay and God is the potter who works us, who forms us and shapes us with his hands. It takes me back to that second creation story with God in the ground, working with the dust of the earth and modeling this mud creature and then breathing life into this mud creature. We're created, formed of the earth, and we're continually worked upon, gently shaped and molded to become more and more who we are, to become more and more the way we are intended to be. How would you like Advent to shape you this year? What would you like to cultivate during this season? 
Just as the source of all being formed us from the dust of the earth and continues to form us in love, we are invited to change, to respond to God, to tune our hearts to the coming of the Christ child, to prepare our bodies to make space and to stay awake. Thank you. 